Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris Wine Africa. This is Chris in central Pennsylvania. South Africa's ruling ANC's racist policies have been exposed once again, this time by a decision from the Supreme Court of Appeal, which today found that it was unlawful for South Africa's tourism minister in April of 2020 to use race as the basis for relief from the hastily assembled Tourism Relief Fund. Now, the Tourism Relief Fund was set up to help tourism businesses survive this black swan event, or at least we thought the time was a black swan event. We didn't know that the tyranny of state oppression would continue for nearly two years or perhaps into perpetuity after it began. But at the time, it was a black swan event. And the tourism minister established rules that only black South Africans in the tourism industry could get money from this fund. Now, let's be honest, the amount of money wasn't very much, just a little over $3,000, 50,000 Rand. But the point is, is that you could not get this once off payment if your tourism business was affected unless you were a business owned by a black South African. Whites, Indians, colors need not apply. Unbelievable. This occurred in April of 2020. And here we are a year and a half later, and we have a judgment which exposes the race hustling and racism of the ruling African National Congress, which has great disdain for a significant portion of its country's population. Now, this came about because of the travel shutdown. International travel was ceased when this happened last year. In March of 2020, the government of South Africa on 27th March imposed a three-week lockdown to get the hospitals ready, <laughs> to, get, to get beds ready. That's right. Um, yeah, they still haven't got them ready. In fact, have fewer hospital beds today than they did then, courtesy of a fire at the Charlotte McExa Hospital and another fire located in Northern Cape, as well as pervasive corruption in contracts that were supposed to make intensive care beds available, and the money just disappeared. Well, the Solidarity Trade Union AFRI Forum made an urgent application for this case to the North Haltang High Court last year. They said this was race-based criteria. But at the time, as I covered endlessly, these applications were dismissed by the North Haltang High Court. Unbelievable. And they were dismissed with cost. So the applicants had to pay the cost. Now, the Supreme Court of Appeal has ruled in favor of AFRI Forum and Solidarity because they challenged the minister's approach. Well, AFRI Forum and Solidarity both agree that the money's gone. There's nothing practical can be done. It's impossible for the minister to recover the money, but they want a declaratory order from the Supreme Court of Appeal this says the minister was not legally obliged by the BBEE Act to make eligibility for assistance to fund the tourism sector code and that her direction was consequently unlawful. And the court granted this. So the tourism minister is in violation of South African law and the constitution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Shall I continue? Well, she argued that she was obliged to do this because of BEE laws. But the problem with that is that the Disaster Management Act is designed to preventing or limiting disasters mitigating their impact, enabling post-disaster recovery. It makes no mention of race-based criteria. That is something in the race law, the racist BEE law, that is set up to ensure the suffering of minorities in South Africa at the expense of people based solely on their skin color. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, in a shocking development, the Supreme Court of Appeal did the right thing here. Has the rule of law returned to South Africa? It's a good question. One has to begin to wonder, with some of the decisions handed down recently by the Constitutional Court, the apex court in the land, despite a fumbled, idiotic, nonsensical appeal by the independent, so-called independent electoral commission to have elections delayed using junk science or no science, claiming that the next wave was upon us. That failed. The Concord said you must hold the election according to the Constitution, which is what the Constitution says. You don't have to be a constitutional advocate or judge or attorney to understand what the Constitution says. The election must be held five years and three months from the date the council is set. And it's as simple as that. November 1st is the last opportunity. That's the date the government is set for the election. Now, this ruling was critically important. We've also just seen the Constitutional Court reject the litigious skullduggery of former President Jacob Zuma in seeking that court to reverse this decision to convict him of temp contempt of court. <laughs> uh, it's amazing to see the rule of law prevail. How long will it work? We've already seen witnesses intimidated, witnesses assassinated in PPE uh, scandals, witnesses being intimidated and assassinated across South Africa in a gangster's paradise of lawlessness. In the face of this, judges have recently been standing up and making the right moral, legal, and ethical calls in their cases. Will it continue? Will South Africa return to the rule of law? 
at least on paper? Well, perhaps. But in the meantime, the racist tourism relief fund has been exposed for the harmful societal destructive race based nonsense that it is. Supreme Court appeal says that the tourism minister violated the law when she gave money out to businesses only if your skin was dark enough. Well, folks, this is um, a great development. Glad to see it's happening here. This is breaking the last hour. If you're not subscribed to Chris White FK, why don't you become one and join us right here? All you have to do is push that button right down there. Cost you absolutely nothing. Be sure to toggle that bell icon to get notified of all updates. But this platform doesn't notify most people despite that. They also unsubscribe people all the time. So be careful and check your favorite YouTube channels. And make sure that you're still subscribed because they'll remove you, especially from this channel, without your knowledge or consent. And if you'd really like to know when all my videos are available, you should join the Chris White Africa Telegram Announcements Group. Chris White Africa Announcements on Telegram. It's free. No one else puts anything in there. So there's no junk. There's no crypto hawking. None of that nonsense. Just me posting when my live shows and my prepared videos are listed. Thanks a lot, folks. God bless and have a lovely day. Hey, South Africa tries the rule of law. What a nice concept. Cheers.